ഹായ് ഹലോ നമസ്കാര ഇൻ ദിസ് സെക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് വിൽ ബി സീയിങ് ദ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് ആംപിയർ സർക്യൂട്ട് ലോ സോ ആസ് പ്രീവിയസ്ലി സീൻ ആംപിയർ സർക്യൂട്ട് ലോ ഇസ് യൂസ് ടു ഫൈൻഡ് ദ കറണ്ട് ദറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫ്ലോയിങ് ത്രൂ എ ഗിവൻ പാത്ത് if i know the magnetic field around it or the other way around so the equation for ampere circuit law as already seen is given by closed line integral of h dot dl is equal to the enclosed current or in other sense if i if i know the magnetic field around a conductor say for example this is what we have seen so i have a conductor over here so the red line is this this the conductor and this if i say the current is flowing in this direction so current is uh, flowing from bottom to top then there will be a magnetic field around that conductor in the direction of how the direction will be if you hold this conductor in your right hand where your thumb finger points the flow of current then the remaining fingers corresponds to the flow of or the rotation of magnetic field hence the magnetic field was something like this it was rotating in the direction of anti clockwise with respect to that of the conductor right so what the ampere circuit law stated was basically if i take this green line i mean uh, the green line here shows the magnetic tick field lines okay what if if i take this magnetic field line itself as a closed path okay i am calling this dotted line the blue line as the amperian path okay this dotted line which is enclosing that particular magnetic field line is an amperian path and using that path i'll be calculating the current that is flowing within the conductor i hope uh, you all remember the way we calculated to help you out further i'll be using the same equation of the ampere circuit law but i'll be solving the problem in a different way so it is i enclosed okay so from this figure what do we know what is the value of uh, uh, the length of my amperian path if i take this is my amperian path i'll call this dl the amperian path is moving in which direction it is in the direction it has say some radius rho okay and it is moving with the angle phi so phi is a variable so if you remember the coordinate systems and the way we solved for the coordinate system this dl the vector dl can i write this vector dl as rho d phi is a variable in the direction phi cap or in your textbook they will be writing it as a phi cap right so i can solve in this manner and how is my flux rotating it uh, rotating around that conductor it is in h dot a phi cap so this is how i represent my h vector this is how i represent dl vector so substituting this in the above expression i'll be getting uh, h dot a phi times rho d phi dot a phi cap is equal to i have to find uh, i mean i that is an closed so that means to say from our uh, dot product you know x dot x or x cap dot x cap equal to y dot dot y cap equal to z dot dot z cap will be equal to 1 similar uh, coordinates if they dot product they will be yielding to 1 dissimilar like x dot y or y dot z or z dot x will be yielding you 0 keep it in mind so if i see that then a phi dot a phi will be yielding me 1 so this particular thing can be written as h dot rho integral of d phi because my 
integration is with respect to d phi is equal to i. So if you see this, what is the limit of phi? Phi is varying from what to what? Phi starts at zero. Okay, I have, I have to represent like this. Phi is like this. So if I say this is my starting point, it starts at zero degree, 90, 180, 270, 360. So that means to say zero to two pi. It is moving from zero to two pi. So solving for this, I can get h dot rho into two pi is equal to i or in that case it is i divided by 2 pi rho if you see this particular expression this is what the expression we had solved at last in the derivation of biosauer's law so wherein the vector h we had represented the vector h is nothing but vector h for a or to find the electric magnetic i mean sorry to find the magnetic field intensity at a point due to infinite conductor we had represented it as h equal to i divided by 2 pi rho times the a phi cap remember this points so this is how we had solved for that so this is the application of ampere circuit law by using ampere circuit law i have solved for the magnetic field intensity at a point which is uh, the application so the textbook content is like this they have placed the conductor in on the z axis and the amperian path is considered to be around that particular conductor where the distance from the origin from the origin to the amp point where i'm finding the magnetic field or the path where i've taken is at rho so the same similar lines if you solve you will be getting the magnetic field that is available around that particular conductor so if you know this magnetic field you can calculate current if you know current flowing through the conductor you can calculate the magnetic field so they both are going to be hand to hand so now for a infinite sheet current what we can do is i'll be trying to place a sheet over this which is of the type infinite so let me assume that this is an infinite sheet okay so this is an infinite sheet that i have so it is infinite in nature i can't define the boundaries so this is my sheet current that is flowing over the sheet so it's a thin sheet and a sheet current is flowing on this so this current is represented as vector k right so how can i represent the vector k vector k can be written as ky times a y cap because the vector is the current is flowing in the y direction so i will call it as ky and it is flowing in the axis of y orientation hence it is a y cap okay that is how i can represent this current or the vector current k y so after doing this what i have to do as the uh, formula states that ampere circuit law states that closed loop h dot dl is equal to the current enclosed right so to apply my acl or ampere circuit law i have to first take a amperian path right so what is that amperian path that i have to consider now so if i say i have to take an amperian path i'll be considering um, let me take this color so i'll be taking an amperian path here the path will be something like this it should be a closed path okay keep that in mind it should be a closed path so this sheet is something i have placed at the origin type you can think like that so to understand you you can think of this i have a sheet and i am creating a closed path in the center or the origin point okay that is amperian path that's what i have done here I'll name this Amperian path. 
so i'll call this as 1 i'll call this as 2 3 4 the width will be called as b the height will be called as a okay of the path so now these are the basics that we have to see but in the path if i say in this path if i say in this path okay what is the current that is flowing so this path is intersecting a sheet okay a sheet is there a huge sheet is there but this path can only intersect a small portion of sheet right if i say this is my sheet small portion i'm trying to show the sheet that's it nothing much so in this part what is the amount of current that flows so you know current that is flowing is represented by vector k but what is the width of the sheet width of the sheet is b only because it the path i have selected is b hence the current that is flowing through this particular uh, sheet the magnitude i am sp uh, specifying the magnitude can be simply written as k times b or ky times b because it is flowing in the direction ky hence i can write it as ky times b everyone agreed upon this so the current that is flowing here since you have many like you have a lot of components over here one two three it is like a uh, place components that is flowing but through this amperian path through only my amperian path the current that is flowing is ky times b hence this can also be written as the current enclosed here is ky times b that is what i am trying to say okay fine now coming to the actual loop the amperian path what are the different types of uh, flux that i can have i mean not the flux the magnetic field that i can find here so to understand this concept what i do now is in this particular region so in the amperian path you can find the current flowing like this right k and there is another k so if i only consider one current path and if i use my right hand to hold that current particular current something like this i'm holding my right hand over here so i can show something like this my thumb finger is representing like this and the remaining things are holding my conductor right where this is the direction of current and if you see the thumb finger which is holding the conductor it shows what the magnetic field around it so i'll be representing magnetic field like this around it okay so by considering this what i can do now is i can write the magnetic field for the whole path so takes for example this is my current that is flowing i am considering magnetic field to be flowing like this flowing like this the vector i am just representing the vector okay i will call the above vector as h naught in the direction ax cap so if you see here it is in x direction if you see this direction this is x this is y this arrow mark is x arrow mark is y and this is z okay so this direction is h naught in the direction a y cap this is going in the h naught is going in the bottom direction hence i can write this as h naught of minus a z cap here again h naught of minus a x cap because it is reverse to that of my positive x axis agree and here it is h naught of a z cap in the positive to the z axis similarly if you see there is another current element that will be flowing parallel to it so for the same thing if i again draw my amperian path or the magnetic field lines across it this is how it looks right 
again that is h naught of a x cap h naught of a z cap which is negative because it is minus this is h naught of minus okay minus a x cap and this is h naught of a z cap right but if i see this two current lines together can you see that uh, uh, thing happens there this element and this element are both in equal in magnitude but opposite in direction hence the vertical component get cancelled off similarly if there is another current element here and there is another current element here this particular component this particular vertical components will be getting cancelled off this and this and so on so at the end what i'll be having is if i simply take the path of the current so this is the path that i have i'll be only having the components in the direction h not of ax cap and i'll be only having beneath this okay it is h not of minus ax cap so in general my h vector can be represented as two things it is h not of ax cap for z greater than 0 okay and h it is minus h not of ax cap for z less than 0 if my point where z axis if i am checking above the z axis it will be a positive h of x h of h not of ax cap and below the z axis i mean below the z equal to 0 or xy plane uh, it will be minus h not of ax cap hope this is understood this is the second most thing now coming to the final part that is i want to solve the integral of this closed path that is h dot dl okay so what are the integrals that i have so if i have to solve for this okay i have 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 and 4 to 1 a closed path right this is the closed path that i have so if you want i can draw that closed path again here i'm now drawing in a solid lines so this is 1 2 3 and 4 this is a closed path where i'm calculating so my integral can be written as 1 to 2 plus 2 to 3 plus 3 to 4 plus 4 to 1 of h dot dl right of h dot dl this is how i can write this part but as we already seen my 1 to 2 path that is this path and this path will be getting cancelled off in an infinite sheet conductor because they the current elements are parallel in a sheet and the components will be having equal and opposite magnitudes which we had already discussed here okay hence this component will be getting cancelled off and i only have that means 1 to 2 will be getting cancelled sorry 1 to 2 will be getting cancelled and 3 to 4 will be getting cancelled so 1 to 2 is not there 3 to 4 is not there so you only have 1 to 4 i mean 4 to 1 and 2 to 3 so this is the path which are the only path that i'll be having so what is the integral of 1 uh, uh, 2 to 3 sorry 2 to 3 what is the integral of 2 to 3 2 to 3 if i go with respect to 2 to 3 my magnetic field is what it is minus h naught minus h naught into ax cap right and what is the distance dl what is the distance i am traversing i am traversing a distance of b because the width of this was b and b in the direction of what b in the direction of minus ax cap right this is how i represent vector h and dl vector so if i multiply this two i'll be getting minus ax and ax will be one unity uh, uh, x cap dot x cap equal to one which we already seen y cap y y cap will be one z cap dot z cap will be one so x cap dot x cap will be one so minus of h naught 
times minus b is what I'll be having or it is simply h naught b this is for the integral 2 to 3 I've just shown for integral 2 to d 2 to 3 similarly if I want to solve for the integral uh, 4 to 1 h dot dl now pause the video and give a try 4 to 1 what is the field h dot dl what is h vector what is the h vector that is corresponding to this h vector corresponding to that can be written as h naught of ax cap right and what is the dl vector what is the distance i am traversing the dl vector is a directional vector or the length that i have traversed length traversed here is b but in what direction in the direction x cap right so length that is traveled is b dot ax cap so ax cap dot ax cap will be getting one unit unit it will be tending to one so it is nothing but h naught dot b so substituting this two d integrals in my actual integral equation my integral equation h dot dl a closed line integral h dot dl can be simply written as h naught times b plus h naught times b or it is simply 2 h naught times b but in the beforehand what was this corresponding to this is nothing but i right what is the current that is flowing through that closed amperian path which we have already discussed the current that is flowing through the closed amperian path is nothing but ky times b right the current that is that was flowing through that path is ky times b substituting that current here ky times b i can now cancel off this term and this term h naught becomes ky by 2 right so using this expression i can find the complete expression for my magnetic field intensity so the complete expression for my magnetic field intensity so this was a general expression which we had already derived or already uh, understood so by substituting this i can write the magnetic field intensity as okay it's not integral ky by 2 in the direction ax cap for z greater than 0 and for z less than 0 it is minus ky by 2 in the direction ax cap for z less than 0 so this is the derivation that we have got for this particular problem if the sh sheet is infinite and in generalized i can write this expression as in general form it is nothing but half of ky times i mean this time uh, ax direction can also be written as half of vector k cross a n cap you might ask now how is that possible so if i say in our problem only the sheet was placed on x y plane this was x y plane and the path the amperian path was taken something like this so i had taken a path something like this so if i am seeing the amperian path uh, the vector towards the line joining the amperian path can be represented in the direction z cap right and the current that is flowing was in the direction a y cap or y cap this is a z cap and this is a y cap so y cross z cap is what x cap right so the answer was what are the answer that we got was in minus k y times 2 into a x cap similarly in general if i know the current and if i know the plane or if i know the path between the place like this is the path that i have drawn and this is the sheet or the current so the line joining a perpendicular line joining the sheet and the path will be getting me the n cap vector so a n cap is nothing but that vector which which was here is z cap 
the line joining that particular path perpendicular line from the sheet that was joining that particular path was given as z cap hence this is a general expression for a sheet current so there is one more application uh, that is for the volume current which uh, i i would like you to solve or uh, you can you can have your textbook and try to solve for infinitely long coaxial transmission line try to understand that problem and try to solve if you have any doubts i'll help you out in that particular thing okay so that's it for this video thank you for listening i hope i have not confused you a lot if you have been confused please 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 let me know i'm i'm happy to help you out i'm happy to redo this video okay thank you